welcome to Worth the Calories. I'm Matthew Vose. And I'm Catherine Vose. We're a Great British Bake Off podcast. I normally say that at the beginning. I forgot. <laughs> well, a week in the sunshine will do that to you. <laughs> Absolutely. Running a bit late on this one. We're very sorry. We were... I can't remember what we were doing when this was on. Probably not a lot. Tapas. 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 Big tapas thing. Not much yes. cake in the last week. No. No. Not enough cake. Absolutely. No cake. Did we have any cake last week? I had a tiramisu Ugh. that I sent back. <laughs> so ah. if, if you want to hear about the tiramisu I refuse to eat, feel free to let me know. <laughs> um, this week, festival week. Arriba. So, so it's good. After the, the weeks where we've been not sure what the what what the theme means, how it applies to cakes, what sort of cakes it's going to be. Festival week. It's so clear what this is going to be. <laughs> it does give you a, a wide pool to choose from, doesn't it? I mean, there's so many festivals and so many different sweet treats associated with festivals. To, to the extent that first round was make some buns associated with any festival you want. <laughs> or indeed an amalgamation of festivals. Or indeed, make up a bun, yeah. should you want to. I, I really enjoyed Henry's, well, um, you know, the festival is Cinnamon Bun Day. <laughs> I haven't yet looked up to see if that's a thing, but if it's not, he's, he's super brazen. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a nice idea, and his buns did look very good. Oh, so. they, they looked delicious, and uh, they looked exactly the same shape and design as the cinnamon buns that I've had that these right. are based on. So I was like, ooh, skills. Okay, yeah. done the right thing. Cardi Mamabulla. Indeed. That's, that's, <laughs> Easy for you to say. That's what it said on the thing. <laughs> Delicious, and he got a handshake. Yeah, I, I'd have happily um, chomped on a few of those. I, I think it says a lot that they made comments about the regularity and some of the yeah. construction of them, but still said the textures, the flavours, everything else was so good, yes. worthy of a handshake. Nice. So clearly that that was a good one. Um, I, I think we'll be raving a bit about Henry throughout this, mm. so well done him. I am not sure what I would have made, because yeah, hot cross buns are the only thing that I can think of, which is showing me out as a... Uh, yeah, festival buns. Yeah, I'd have probably ended up doing a hot cross bun as well, although it does seem to be the most pedestrian yeah. choice, but then work for Steph. Absolutely. So, the 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 amalgamation of Christmas figgy pudding and a hot cross bun. Mm. Mm. It also looked a bit twee. <laughs> With the the holly on. And yeah. The and yeah. Yeah. Like it was trying to be a Christmas pudding as well as a. Yes. Mm. I mean, it's it's kind of cute, but also kind of homemade, as as um, yeah. one of them got described. So yeah. So Alice, lemon and blueberry hot cross buns. Did not fancy that. No, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, no. Um, and they describe them as homemade, which is damning with very faint uh, praise, I think. I agree. Yeah. So were there any, I presume the cardamom mabulla stood out to you? Any of the others that we want to comment on? I, I, want, think I, I wanted to eat rosies. Semlor. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know what they are. I still can't remember what they are or where they were from. Peacock-shaped but... sort of donutty style scone bun things. With, with like a white chocolate um, creme mm. pat in the middle mm. and some uh, raspberry jam. That may or may oh. not be Japanese. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I refuse to believe that anything that is so heavily cream based dairy based yeah dairy yeah, based yeah. is mm. japanese given how little dairy there is in japanese true, cuisine but true. anyway having having tried their bread and cheese and stuff yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> i liked the steph's hot cross buns like you say the zest there's a bit of spice in them mm. um that's a very nice idea but yeah it, it ended up a little bit pedestrian as a yeah. challenge i think yeah i think so but it does make me want to make hot cross buns though yes mm. yeah which i've never done I, I've done a few times. Okay. I, I did once for, uh, I, I did an Easter party when I was in Japan oh, and, nice. I, and I made hot cross buns for the 30 guests. Nice. How did they go down? Uh, they went down very well. Mm. And, um, and, and and the bread came out very well okay. because there were these enormous heated vents in the ceiling above the workstations in the community right. centre kitchen, which basically made them prove, like the dough I prove, <laughs> like, because I mean, I knew, I didn't know any better. I just made one batch of dough to produce like a gazillion um, buns. Right. And it literally looked like aliens coming out of the, <laughs> um, it, it was an amazing <laughs> eruption of uh, proved dough. They came out very amazing. well. My, my problem was I couldn't get the cross to amalgamate right. on the top yeah, okay. so i ended up with these weird crispy 
pastry like crosses on the top of these very delicious buns. Ah, nice. Yes. Okay, something to try. Mm. Um, as much as it was a slightly ordinary challenge for what everyone made, it did help distinguish who was doing well and who wasn't. Absolutely. There, there was an, no one had the the terrible errors and the things going mm. wrong and salt instead of sugar, that kind of thing. But some did come off much better. Absolutely. And it's moments like that that I can see why giving a bit of leniency on the challenge is interesting. Mm. You know, here is as much rope as you want. Go, Go and see what yourself. you can do with it. Yeah, exactly. So, And this is the thing. Rosie, I think, given more time, could well. probably produce <laughs> some absolutely amazing things. Yeah, absolutely. But she, like, both the, t- the signature and the showstopper, mm. she's overreached herself. And she's not been able to produce the excellent thing that she's trying to make in the time that's available. Yeah. So it just comes off looking a bit... Not quite on point. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. And that speaks to our constant thing that time is the challenge. Mm. The challenge itself is not the challenge, particularly when we get to this stage where everyone is performing well. Yes. The other thing that came across was... Alice had clearly had a week where she couldn't practice and was, yep. had other things distracting her, but was playing up to the camera yeah. a bit with it, I think. I I, th- I think it felt like she was worried this week and was trying to make it seem okay. Mm. However, last week she almost won. She almost got Star Baker. Yeah. And the time before when she did get Star Baker, the following week she was in a lot of trouble. Yeah. So is there an element of hubris or something to that to, to make her feel too comfortable maybe? Mm. Maybe I found Don't that know. interesting. Just uh. actually, you know, the sort of recurring pattern there. Whereas Michael, we both said, was fairly zen about it. Yeah, well, given how stressed he got at the start of the show, mm. I, I feel like he's settled into a rhythm. And and yeah, he's done a great job, but he's now now outclassed by the others. Yeah, this 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 was his sort of limit with it, uh. and he was the one who almost walked away when it was going very wrong at one point. Yeah, and didn't. And yeah, committed yeah. and saw it through and, and survived because yeah. of his commitment to it. So Good lad. Yeah, I, I appreciated his approach mm. to it there. So we come to the technical challenge. Twelve mm. Sicilian Casatelle. Yeah, interesting challenge. Mm. If we had a deep fat fryer, I would be making these. Yeah. I, I'm really interested in in these. Mm. I'm I'm not sure if they can be just fried. A bit like um pot stickers. I don't know. I think you'd need at least an inch of oil in there, right. and that that no, that, that again is lots of hot oil. Do we oil think in they could kitchen. be baked? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It would melt the inside, and it would just go a bit. Yeah. Blue. So it's a shame because I like the look of it. So so something we should definitely try next time we go into a, an Italian deli. Yes, mm, absolutely. I like the look of them. Absolutely. But problem is. The cannoli always joys your eye, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cannoli, cannoli. <laughs> um, I liked this as a challenge again. I found it very interesting. This was reminiscent of earlier series where you had some people who were really comfortable mm. with, oh, yes, I know what this is, or I know how to use this bit of equipment, that kind of thing, and some people who were completely new to it. <laughs> I loved Henry's, well, it's just a handle, isn't it? <laughs> I was like, all right, love. And then everyone breaks Coffee. the handle off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I, I like the combination of having to get good flavours by getting your um, filling right mm-hmm. and the combination of that sort of technical skill of, of knowing to get the pastry thin enough and then getting the crimping mm. working. And Yeah, no, it was very interesting. It, it was one of the first genuine technical challenges. Yes. Not just limited knowledge or anything, but actual there are skills kin to skills you know elsewhere, mm. but you're using them in a different way. It was interesting that David went, well, it's like ravioli. Yeah. I was like, and I think you're very lucky well, if you have the experience of having made ravioli coming into this challenge. Yeah, you can just use a pasta thing. I've never yeah. used a, a pasta. No, me either. Roller? Yeah. I don't, I don't know that we have. We don't have one, do we? I don't we? think we have one. No. We pasta. have a pineapple core. <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm not sure. I'm, maybe I'm not the pineapple using, cora would help. I'm using it as an equivalent for us having ridiculous things, yeah. and we have our apple lathe, and, and we do, <laughs> and we have our ebelschiefer. We do have pan. an ebelschiefer. We don't have a pasta machine. We do not, and and I think I'd be willing to buy a pasta machine, except we don't have a deep fat fryer. We don't have a deep fat fryer, and we have no interest in making pasta. No, no. no. Um, my first school. That I went to, St. Stephen's in 
South Godston. Yep. Shout out for the school I went to for like three South years. South Godston massive. <laughs> With our 12 streets. Um, outside the, we, we had a swimming pool there. and An outside swimming pool. At, at the school. <laughs> Outside swimming pool in the UK. <laughs> in the UK. In Surrey. Sorry. Oh, how nice. <laughs> and to dry your things at the end, you had a mangler, a oh, bowler, really? that you would put your swimming costume through that would help squeeze all the stuff out. Oh. That's all pasta machines ever make me think of. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh. um, again, no one went particularly wrong. Alice's obviously broke apart. Yes, because it's um, too thick. Because it was too thick and too filled. Yep. But that is, you know, that that bit of the skill she didn't quite get down. But again, a nice range of you can see who was going to do well and who wasn't. Yep. But I didn't quite get it right. I didn't expect Rosie to come top. No, I thought David was going to come top. Mm. And I, I think it's just the amount of filling she yeah. sort of locked out. And potentially mm. on the one that they cut open. Had they got one of his more full ones, might have gone knows. the other way. So I think they were fairly even Stevens, those two. Yeah. Yeah, a good challenge. Yeah. I, I appreciate that yeah. one. I'm looking forward to trying them. Not going to be able to make them, so... Hot cross buns. Moving on to Keklapas Sam- Sarawak. <laughs> which I had up in front of me a minute ago. Um, Sarawak, I think is actually a region of Malaysia. I think it is as well. Yeah. So I, I, I wonder if it is Sarawak cake. Cake from yeah. that area. Yeah, than, that would make sense. Yeah, being the thing. Um, lots of layers, lots of grilling, lots of patterns. Yeah, it does not look fun to do. Well, it looks fun to design. Right. Doesn't look fun to do. I think it looks like a lot of fun to do. Okay, this is the difference between you and me. Go on. Where I like to cook with sort of big, free broad abandon. actions, free <laughs> abandon, throw in the flavours, and here I have a thing which is large and flavoursome. Needs more salt, now more <laughs> spice, now more. And you like things which are precise and detailed. <laughs> and need... I, I would not have the patience okay. to do this. I'm very happy to eat it if you make mm. it for me. I, I'm but... really interested to try. Probably nothing quite so elaborate as they've done, mm. a sort of more... Battenberg style thing, probably slightly thicker layers, maybe. Yeah. But I quite like it. Yeah. It's quite an interesting way of doing it. Although thicker layers would be harder to cook, so maybe you don't want to do thicker layers. Mm, I, I, the thicker layers, yeah, they wouldn't yeah. grill. Now, we had a memory of something similar to this being yes. done before. I've looked up and there, there was the Schick Tort right. that they did a few years ago. I'm sure there was another one. That I'm, I'm sure we've seen it on like celebrity maybe bake off with them doing it, but yeah, the shik tort is what I was remembering, right. which was like all the pancake layers. Yeah, exactly. Wasn't you basically it? you pour a bit in, cook it, pour a bit in, cook it. Yes, under the grill, but it didn't have the sort of and then that it because, wasn't cake and it wasn't yeah, multicolored because it's tort. You then cover it, I think, with like a chocolate right topping. So, mm. Mm. I really like the designs. I think yes. everyone's was interesting. I thought it was really interesting how you could see it was the inners. Once they slice it open, where it's had pressure and it's been compressed, mm. it tessellates really nicely. Everything yes. lines up and looks really good. Lots of right angles. Yes, yes. But the edges, where it doesn't have that pressure, exposes where things aren't quite sitting together as yeah. well. And it's a real shame. It's almost like you would make it too big. And too and then long, cut it down, and then slice it just before yeah. serving. Although, also once you've sli- sliced it and served a slice, the slice looks really good. Yes. So maybe that's the thing. I, I might have to um, Google a few of these mm. online to see what the real thing looks like. Yeah, I bet people have done lovely ones. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So Rosie really went out and tried something here with triangles, yeah. creating a diamond shape. Her dad had made her a thing for cutting the exact size every time. Perfect. Yep. Fully appreciated jig. Yeah. Although it didn't look like there was a jig for cutting the triangle, mm. which was a shame. You, you'd almost say, well, then build something that you put the cake in and slice downwards and it slices it yes. in twain on, on the diagonal. Yeah, you could hold it together and then have like a guillotine down. Exactly. It, basically, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, even just a knife and those two but yeah. that sit or, or on another wire. block or something. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So that's a shame. Yeah. Um, I also found it interesting. What she was doing was the middle diamond cake. She had cut into all the triangles and then reformed the triangles rather than putting one square that's at an angle. Mm. And I can't decide whether having all those lines at an angle 
just doesn't look great. Whether you need the sort of diamond incorporating four triangles. Don't know. Mm. Oh. But it did it did look precarious. Yes. Yeah. Be, uh, and I think because one of the triangles didn't quite line up, certainly yeah. on that diamond. Or all the rest, actually, if you if you sort of cover it with your thumb and look at the rest of them, it looks really good. Mm. Just yeah, you need such precision for that. Yeah. Which is a shame. But a really good attempt. Yes, absolutely. But this is the thing, and again, we've said this in previous years, people trying too much can lead you into problems. And I'm not sure quite why she felt the need to try so hard. I don't know, but but I think she's been doing that all the way throughout. It's just okay. that some of the early ones, it's come off. Right. Like that, that's... I keep going back to the chicken, mm-hmm. ki- chicken yeah. biscuit sculpture. Yeah. But I mean, that was pretty ambitious mm. and it came off. True. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Were there any others that stood out to you that you wanted to comment on? I didn't really want to eat David's. Well, he went for spice again. Mm. Learn your lessons. Yeah, and it all just—I think the colours were just too intense. I'm like, oh, that just looks. Oh yes, yeah. he had the blue and grey layers. Yeah, and blue and grey on food looks like mould. Mm. So unless it's a really nice cheese, you don't want to see it. Yeah, it wasn't calling to me. No. Alice's looked good. Yeah, Alice's, I think, came off because she went for striking colours that are obviously very different from each other in a sequence that we would understand. Yeah. So you go, oh, yeah, rainbow, really good idea. Yeah. And it just works. Yeah. Mm. And and very clearly, although she wasn't then in contention for winning Star Baker, that was so good, it elevated her from where yeah. she was. In fact, made her jump rosy. Yeah. Yeah, that's very fair. And the fact it's chocolate orange and salted caramel, it is, yeah, core flavours. Just, dear listener, I'm getting a very, very happy well, look from Catherine. Call it beyond core flavours. I think they should be classed as core food groups. <laughs> <laughs> nom, 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 nom. Yeah, basically. So th- there is an element of playing it safe with those flavours, but you've got to hit the flavours anyway. Yep. But, Yeah. It's a very good way to go. You can make me salted caramel stuff every day if you like. Thank you. You're very kind. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Shame about Michael's with the rum and ginger not coming off. And and yeah, the fact he didn't do coloured layers everywhere. Mm. But again, that was fairly obvious. You know, that's the sort of thing you would go, oh yeah, perhaps I should try this instead. Yeah. Shame. Not really an awful lot more to say. I mean... Yeah, so, so, I mean, Henry's lemon and lime... I... Mm. I think I was missing something. Like, the judges seemed to really, really like it. And I was like, yes, it looks all right. But maybe it's the taste. Maybe maybe we... Oh, well, obviously, we don't get to taste any of them. But, like, <laughs> maybe that sometimes when you go, I don't really understand their comments 100%, mm. is because actually the taste is so much better. Yeah. That I, I've got a comment here that the texture particularly stood out for right. him. Right. But I think it was because he had created that geometric pattern in the layers. Yes. Which went well. He created a geometric pattern on top by layering the layers yes. in a circle and having some stick out and some not. And then where everyone else had done a layer that was a sort of marzipan, curd, topping, that kind of thing, he'd done another layer of one sheet of cake. Yes. To to give it a, a very square edge. Mm. So I think because he'd done something different there, it stood out. And again, not pushing it too far. Mm. Something a little bit different, a bit creative, but not necessarily, and I'm going to do triangles and diamonds and yes. extreme things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what on him? And I think very deserved for Star Baker. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so Steph, we've not really mentioned, and she did fine this week. Yep. It, enough that you can see she can probably continue as she is and win it. Yes. Because she doesn't do badly at no. all in any round. Um, But Henry, it all just came together I think Absolutely. on each one so good on him yeah Steph's still my bet to win okay the whole thing because she's just constantly consistently good yeah whereas Henry can be a little bit wavery I, I yes I can see it being a problem for Steph if suddenly something goes wrong but I feel like something's more likely to go wrong for the other people who are left in yeah and, and they're more likely to suddenly be flapped where Steph is consistent and capable Mm. And and I'm really pleased with that. It's really good to see because yeah. she wasn't mentioned in our first few episodes. No, exactly. And she's just come out as actually she's really good. She's not annoying with it. She's not doing too much or too yeah. risky. 
Yeah. It's just good baking. Yeah. Good and you appreciate stuff. that. Mm, absolutely. Mm. Baking. Yes. So next week is pastry week. Nice. Love a pie. Like a pie. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure what that middle one was. It had a sort of crepe look to it. So I'm not sure what that's going to be. Yeah. It seems technical. to be like painting the... I don't know. Yeah. A bit like a crepe or something. Yeah. So but that's one... not pastry. Mm. We'll see what comes of that. Whether it's something we can do or not. Yes. I think we've not had a chance to make Vereens nope. because we're away. We saw Vereens, dear listener. We saw Vereens live in the wild when we when we went out <laughs> stargazing. We're basically in Doctor Who now. <laughs> well, what wasn't there a Doctor Who um, alien that uh, that called the Vereen? Called the Vereen. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe possibly. Yeah. Um, we were out stargazing. We were served some. In the restaurant, weird chocolate sponge cream bomb thing. Yeah. Which wasn't very nice. Tables next to us got interesting green layers. Mm. Lucky them. Nom, 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 nom. Mm. We had the nice pork, so that's okay. We did. The pork yes. was good. And then we went stargazing. Which was lovely. Yes. There's not cakes. Um, <laughs> so we'll have to try to come back to Vereens because I, I do still want to try them. Yeah. I think this sort of layer geome- geometrical thing appeals to me. It's that lovely well, precision again. How about this next weekend? You do a Vereen mm-hmm. and I do hot cross buns. Okay. And then we've might not have Tried done them, both yeah. technical challenges, but we've covered something from each week. Absolutely. That sounds good. And then we Oh, can... and then we could do whatever this third challenge. And then we've got challenge. this week's to catch up on. Okay. Well. So so three three somethings so, this so weekend. What we might be doing is catch up episodes at the end of the season. Yes. Let's let's do oh, some that, that, special that one-offs. Sounds, that sounds a lot more achievable, doesn't it? <laughs> things as in I, the future I... sound better than things now, is what you're saying. <laughs> I'm just, as I was talking, I was going, oh, when are we going to fit everything into the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if we do things not now, and in another time that's another now, that sounds better to us. Indeed. Good. Until right. that now arrives. Until that now arrives, because we still need to do Mamul. You need to do mammal. I do need to do it. I bought a mammal mold. Mammal mold. I want to make mammal. I want to eat your mammal. Okay, good. So pastry week next week will be interesting to see. Hopefully yeah. we can go unspoiled for the next one. Yep, Catherine? I will try not to look at our work <laughs> sweepstake email when it comes out on Wednesday. Mind you, as much as you were spoiled for this week, you then forgot. <laughs> and started debating with me who was going to win on. <laughs> oh well, which is a great moment. Which is well, I don't think it could be David because. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will speak to you all probably in a few days for Pastry Week. Yum. 